द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी गल करा हंटिंगटन न्यूयॉर्क दाउन काउंसिल के कैंडीडेट कैथलीन थलेरी जी न असी इस शो पर तुम तो हमेशा इनकरेज करते हैं तो लोकल जी काउंसिल है लोकल तो इलेक्शन उन्होंने पार्टीसपेट करते क्योंकि ये बड़ा इंपोर्टेंट है कि तुम उन कैंडीडेट्स को समझो उन्होंने इशूज़ को समझो और वो कैंडीडेट्स पिक करो जो थोड़ू तो रिप्रजेंट करते हो तो इंटरस्ट को रिप्रजेंट करते हो कैथलिन कलेरी जी लोंग आइलैंड के रेजिडेंट हैं Long Island, uh, New York. She's uh, she was born in uh, Long Island, New York, and we will speak to her today about why she is the best candidate for this election. Uh, Kathleen, you're very welcome. Oh, thank you for letting me come here today and talk to you. Uh, Kathleen, tell us something about yourself. Were you, were you born on the island? Yes. So I was born in Massapequa. Uh, where I grew up with two younger brothers, and then I've been living in East Northport for the past 21 years mm -hmm. with my husband Brian and our daughter Kate. And and did you go to school in Long Island? I did. I went to school. Uh, the first two years I actually went still on Long Island, but in Queens. I went to St. John's University for two years, mm -hmm. and then I ended up graduating with a business degree from Adelphi University in Garden City. Uh, Kathleen, tell us something about your work experience that makes you uh, the most viable candidate for this position in Long Island. Okay, so uh, first off, I have 25 years ma contract management experience. So mm -hmm. I've worked for companies in um, such as Citigroup, Merrill Lynch, and the financial services industry, and then I've also worked for Department of Defense contractors and a. Um, Accenture, which is a consulting company. Mm -hmm. So uh, with contract management, your responsibility for making sure that your contracts are operating within the certain parameters, hitting targets, hitting their budget, and not doing any overruns. What you eventually want is to be able for the company to be making the money that they intended to when they were entered into this contract, mm -hmm. and that the client is satisfied and is getting everything that they intended to when they decided to either purchase your services or product. Mm -hmm. So uh, we understand you have the experience with the budgets that we need in this council. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, also, I want to bring up one other thing. So yes. I did that for 25 years, and then mm -hmm. I decided to make a career switch and went back to school at SUNY Farmingdale for mm -hmm. horticulture. So okay. I spent a few years getting my degree there, and mm -hmm. what I did after graduating was I worked for an interior horticulture, and then went over and moved over to state parks. Mm -hmm. So I worked at Bayard Cutting Arboretum, which is on the south shore of Long Island. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful state park; everyone should visit it. I like to put that plug in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, my responsibility was to manage the native planting there. There's an, a newly developed, renovated area that we have all native plants, so we'd be able to show. The community, how you can grow these beautiful plants that don't require a lot of um, as much care as, like maybe an exotic plant. They don't need as much um, watering, and they can adapt to a lot of our flooding issues. And since this is on the South Shore, you, they can deal with a lot of like the salt air, salt mm -hmm. breeze, and such. So it's very good. It's a, uh, not only is it beautiful, but it's really educational to the public. Another thing that I did there was I was responsible for. Uh, applying for and managing grants from the Department of Environmental Conservation. Mm -hmm. There was a large part of the park called Paradise, mm -hmm. and it was decimated by southern pine beetle. It was unsafe for the public to be able to go into that part of the park because mm -hmm. many of the pathways had dead or dying trees. Mm -hmm. So there, I was um, also responsible for redesigning areas of the garden that had to do with um, flooding issues. Because as we know on Long Island, we've been seeing that flooding has changed over the, since uh, Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. A lot of areas that never used to flood are flooding, mm -hmm. and others that had flooded before are getting even more flooding. Mm -hmm. So having this environmental background plus the business experience, I think, is a really good, an excellent skill set for Huntington. We have a lot of coastline in, mm -hmm. Hun in the township of Huntington, and we know as a government we have a lot of money that we're, we're spending on behalf of the residents. And we should be making sure that that money is is being spent properly and efficiently. 
Uh, have you run for public office before? I did. I ran for public office for the first time last year. Mm -hmm. I ran for New York State Senate against Senator John Flanagan, mm -hmm. who at the time was the Senate Majority Leader. Mm -hmm. I uh, made the decision to run uh, based on the fact that Senator Flanagan, I felt and still believe, was not really taking into consideration the residents' issues. Mm -hmm. He was um, dealing mostly with people that were giving him money that were outside of the community. And I mean, you can look at the fundraising and see where he was getting most of his campaign donations. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of things as Senate Majority Leader, he was holding up a lot of um, votes not, for not being brought onto the Senate floor in New York State. Mm -hmm. And since we have flipped, all of us have flipped uh, the New York State Senate mm -hmm. over to Democrats. A lot of those things have passed, such as the uh, red flag laws. There's been some changes to um, voting reforms, mm -hmm. which this year we have early voting. Mm -hmm. And you'll also be able to make some changes to your registration status and just a lot of things that people were really anxious about. The um, Another one that was very important to people at, that I heard at the door was the Child Victims Act, mm -hmm. which would allow people who had been, who uh, currently adults, who had been um, abused as a child, sexually abused as a child, to bring up a case against their abuser and not have to um, be shut out by um, statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. What was happening before was people were only up to the age of 23, and if they didn't bring their case by then, then they were out of luck. Wow. So, so do you uh, now or previously held any government positions? No, I have not. And uh, do, do you belong to any service or community organizations in Long Island? Yes, I do. So mm -hmm. I belong to the League of Women Voters of Huntington. So what we've been doing there is we make sure that people are registered to vote. It's mm -hmm. a fantastic organization and they're non-political. Mm -hmm. So since I've decided the two times that I've been running, I've stepped back from my advocacy with them, but they are a great organization and they really provide a lot of uh, service to the community and a lot of education to issues. Um, and I find that anyone has any, you know, concerns or questions about things that they want to know on certain levels, mm -hmm. League of Women Voters is an excellent website to go to because they will really dive deep into that. And another uh, area, other, apart from um, working with my daughter, I was her uh, track coach. I also helped her with um, doing some Girl Scouts, you know, when she was little, all of those, you know, fun things and mm -hmm. soccer coaching. Mm -hmm. um, now that she's in high school, I, you know, she doesn't need me to be her coach. <laughs> but I have also, um, currently I'm on the board of the Long Island Native Plant Initiative. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing there is making sure that we are growing plants that are actually native to Long Island mm -hmm. and that we're hoping to be able to grow enough that we can have them be sold commercially and they can be put into restoration projects. <laughs> Uh, you know, with all the things that you have done, I think this question is already answered, but uh, I would still like you to tell us what, what's your inspiration for, uh, for oh, running for okay. this office okay. right okay. now. Sorry. Sorry if I missed that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the reason that I decided to run for this office yeah. is uh, that once I started looking about what has been happening in the last few years of our town is that the concentration is, again, similar to what was happening last year when I ran at mm -hmm. the state level, the similar problems here on the town level is that things are being done for the people who are, are connected and have um, been involved in maybe certain politics and they're being taken care of. Their friends are being brought in. We're not seem to be hiring the best qualified people to run departments. Mm -hmm. The people that we're having that are being hired to run departments are people who have run for other races and have have lost. Mm -hmm. So now they're being compensated to be paying six-figure salaries to be running departments. Mm. Also what we we have is that is a is not an inclusive feeling in the town. Um, for example we have issues with um, people are very have problems you know with parking and with zoning mm -hmm. and instead of making bringing people together and asking what all their opinions are. And, and these are the things that I have felt before I decided to run, but has been enforced by what I'm hearing at the doors because I've been canvassing and have knocked on over 2,500 doors. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to people, they're saying the same thing. They don't know what is happening in the town and they, they don't have a sense that the government is working for them, that it's working for others. Mm -hmm. There have been institutions, uh, inst um, new fees have been instituted, such as a mooring fee for boaters. That wasn't something that was done in the past. Mm -hmm. There's a, a double and tripling of fees for fares. The East Northport Chamber of Commerce has had to pay more money to host 
the East Northport Fair and similar fairs to in Huntington. Mm -hmm. So we're being, we're we're being, uh, fees are being raised. We're not getting any more services, and we're also not being asked to be included in any of the decision making mm -hmm. in order to of the decisions that the town government is making. Mm -hmm. See, we, we always believe the repository of democracy in any society is the local government. Yes. And if local government is not listening to us, that, then, then that's a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. right? uh, you have uh, some background with unions. Yes. Can, you, can you tell us about that? Yes. So I was lucky to um, grow up as a my father having been in the union, so he was in uh, CSEA. He worked for New York State mm -hmm. Telephone um, and then at and So I was lucky in knowing, like, having great insurance as a child and mm -hmm. dental, and then my father had a very good, well-paying job. Mm -hmm. And then um, my husband is a New York City retired firefighter. Mm -hmm. And while he was a firefighter, he was the union delegate for his firehouse. Mm -hmm. So again, I understand how um, you they have protections of their job related to his and to my father others was a lot about safety, mm -hmm. making sure that people were being taken care of, making sure like, you know, after 9-11 that the firefighters were given, were giving um, special masks, were giving change of clothes because mm -hmm. what was happening down then when they were working there was that they had to go home in the stuff that they were working in. So now they're bringing all of that home mm -hmm. and no one knew what was in there. So, you know, being having a voice for workers being able to advocate for them and for their families is very important. Mm -hmm. As a state, when I was worked for the New York State Parks, I was also in the union for a CSEA. Mm -hmm. So I understand that unions have, have, are keeping the middle class together, but they've also helped build the middle class. And that's something that's very important that we need, especially here on Long Island, that it's very difficult to you know, live here and that to have a strong union is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, talk to you uh, after short break. Okay. So see Vic Dero, the way forward. The way forward is to offer to Swagata. Aj Asi Gal Karrea, Huntington Town Council the uh, candidate uh, Kathleen Clarinal. Uh, so Kathleen what do you consider the top three issues in this election? Um, I consider it to be the character of the town and zoning and density, so I'm going to put that as one. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's taxes, mm -hmm. and the other is water quality. Mm -hmm. I could also maybe put parking in the f part of the density part, too, so I'll try to shove as many as I can in your three. <laughs> yes, definitely. See, before uh, we talk uh, about anything else, mm -hmm. you know, so something that, that raises concern, we have seen a lot of young people uh, leaving the island. Yes. Or a lot of young people not moving to the island the mm -hmm. way they were, you know, raising families. Uh, that might be because of the expensive housing, mm -hmm. that might be because of the high taxes, mm -hmm. right? W w w what do you think needs to be done in this regard? Um, one thing that I think has been done already, which I think was a good um, decision, is that the accessory apartment law was changed to mm -hmm. allow a current homeowner, and previously they used to have to live in the main part of the house, and then they could rent out the apartment part. Mm -hmm. But what that led you to have is somebody who only needs one bedroom and maybe is, is you know, elderly, doesn't need to live in this five bedroom part of the house. Mm -hmm. They would re prefer to live in the apartment and then rent out the rest of it. Now, this is also under the same guidance of, you know, the car situation and everything else. The rules, those still rules apply. Mm -hmm. But I think that is really a great solution, allowing more housing stock without building up and building on any any of the empty lots that we have, the very few that we have. Mm -hmm. And that will also help with the the market. So there'll be more places for people to live, mm -hmm. more places for families to live, mm -hmm. and that should also help with the prices because obviously it's more that you put out on the market that should be lowering the prices of rent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a great solution because then people also can stay in the town. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, there was a time when towns like Huntington would be considered just commuter towns, like people working in city mm -hmm. and you know living here. But now, with the vibrant business culture that we see developed around that 110 corridor right. and, and, and local uh, places, what, what do you uh, think needs to be done to attract big and small businesses and talent in, in Huntington? Well, I think that what we need to do as town of Huntington is be able to project and let people know that we're open mm -hmm. 
for companies coming because if we're seeing if we're being shown as somebody who's not open to new new development or additional development or any changes mm -hmm. and if we don't show that we have a proper di direction mm -hmm. and an overall plan then companies aren't going to want to come here they're going to think that perhaps you know we're not going to be as open or or agreeable and work with them but there are limits of what the town can do. So what we also need to be able to do is work with the county legislators and the state legislators also, mm -hmm. because they have a bigger pull and they also work across um, other areas, not just town of Huntington, but um, Babylon and Islip and such. So mm -hmm. working together and having those relationships, which I do, you know, having starting running last year, I've made some great connections with our county legislators and our state senators mm -hmm. and assembly people. And those are the things that I think working together with the town, county and state is that makes us stronger and bring we'll be able to bring more opportunity and money and incentives to companies to come here in Huntington. <laughs> and and uh, at the same time, the challenges to maintain that character of uh, the town, as you said, yes. which we feel a challenge with, uh, you know, uh, huge uh, developments, new apartments, mm -hmm. lack of uh, parking. Yes. And, uh, it, what, what, what do you think needs to be done in that regard? I think we need to look at the town as an overall plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of what we hear about is in de talking about sections. So the Centerport Corridor, which is where the Mill Pond is, and then there's Jellyfish, and then there's the uh, Water's Edge. Mm -hmm. If we talk about, if we were concentrating just on that, or concentrating on whether or not the 7-Eleven will go on the corner, mm -hmm. whether or not Jellyfish will be turned to apartments, we're not talking about the 25A Corridor as the way that everyone, most everyone, I live in East Northport, mm -hmm. so the way that I get into Huntington and the way people travel, we're, we're not looking at as overall comprehensive picture. Mm -hmm. We're looking at, right currently, it's just being looked at small one-offs, and that's, the, that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that you take that one area of Huntington and bring it out to all of Huntington. You can talk about the 110 corridor, how is that affecting people, mm -hmm. and where are they going to be living? Can they work and live at the 110 corridor? What should we be doing? Should we be doing any more in Huntington Village? Probably not. It seems that we're we're maxed out there. You know, it's it's difficult to find parking. Where else are we developing? But let's let's take a look at the town from the whole part because I think what happens is people are only talking about one or two areas, the mm -hmm. village, centerport, mm -hmm. and individual projects, and they're not looking at how it, how are we going to do best for the entire town because that's what's important. Mm -hmm. But but for. Uh market like in uh, Huntington Village you uh, we do feel that uh, the town needs to come up with some some creative ideas to yes. um, find some solutions right so what um, so you're asking me what um, how they should be de 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 developing do, do now? you see a role for the government there Yes, I do. Hmm. I do see a road for there. I think that there, we need to be bringing more of the community into discussing what it is that they want. As I said, what I hear at the doors, two, mm -hmm. two things, and it's interesting. One is Huntington Village is overdeveloped. We can't handle any more development. Oh, and my kids can't live here. How are they going to live here? Hmm. Well, you know, we have to talk about those two things because if you're thinking that, if you're saying, and pe you know, people have a right to that, that belief that Huntington is overdeveloped, but then if you want your kids to live here, where are they going to live? So, so why don't we get together and be creative in the ideas mm -hmm. of what we can do and what people want to do? I mean, right now there's some talk about tinkering with some of the zoning changes, but that's not making anyone happy. Mm -hmm. And that has only been discussed within a certain part of the government, the town board. This hasn't been brought out to all, the t all of the town board, all the council people. And it also hasn't been discussed with the people who are against any new development or the builders. And everyone has, you know, if we bring... the if you, we bring everyone together, we'll be getting better answers. If you're just going to segment and not let anyone give their opinion, mm -hmm. then you're going to continue on on a path without good input. And I think that's the problem is that people are in the government are not listening to the residents. And they have, not everyone is just against things. People have creative ideas and we should be going out to more people and broadening mm -hmm. the base. And I think that we can do a lot of good there. And that's, that should be the part of the, that should be the role of government is to be able to go out, mm -hmm. bring people in. We know the, the town council people don't have all, shouldn't have all the answers, right? <laughs> they shouldn't. They should be going out to experts. They should be going out to people who are living there, people who have ideas, mm -hmm. and that we should be bringing that in and let's all make 
you know, make good decisions that way. And that's I found that to work in in uh, private practice and business. Mm -hmm. You know, the more people you have, you talk to the people who are actually doing the job, living it. They're going to have a different idea than somebody that's sitting outside of it and just looking overview. That's what uh, we might need. You <laughs> have raised issues with. Uh, cutting of budgets with, uh, for the maritime department. Yes, hmm. right. So the maritime department used to have many more people in it um, and has recently dismissed its full-time director. So we have many miles of coastline in town of Huntington. I'm sure that you've been up to the harbor. You know how many boats are up there. Mm -hmm. And it's imp and you know we've noticed that we've had to put in, there's been some issues with, you know, accidents and such, not just in, in Huntington, but, but it can be, you know, we need somebody to be overseeing and protecting our water and our safety in Huntington. Mm -hmm. And what we have now is a part-time person who doesn't have a background in maritime safety and who is working another full-time job not close to the town of Huntington and is expected to be managing all of this. Mm. Well, we've been very lucky. We haven't had any accidents, but we're also not looking forward. And we're looking forward to any making any additional changes. So we are saving money by having this part-time person, mm -hmm. but really, what are we giving up? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, consi considering the uh, kind of uh, surroundings we have, I think uh, that might be a very important issue for yes. uh, Long Island. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Uh, all right. Uh, Another thing uh, I would like to talk to you about is uh, which, which concerns uh, uh, people on the whole of Long Island, of a county in, in our town, uh, is, is safety. Mm -hmm. There are some uh, issues related with gang violence, drugs. How, how do you propose on handling those? So um, our, our detectives in Huntington have really been great going out into the community and discussing issues with the people and there have been a lot of groups that have been working in fostering uh, communications between the residents mm -hmm. and the town and the public safety officers and police officers. What I think and what I've talked to some other people about needs to be is is looking over at some of the money that we've been getting from the state and town and federal mm -hmm. and maybe redistributing it around to other areas of people who there are certain groups in the town that don't feel that they are being um, their concerns are being as addressed mm -hmm. as they should be and mm -hmm. that is part of a safety issue too because you want to be able to have the community be able to feel free to be able to come and make um, concerns complaints mm -hmm. and then you also want you know your your middle school teenager you know I have a teenager I know you need them to be able to be involved in the town and doing things and and sometimes especially if parents are working there's not places for them to go and be you know having fun or getting to know other people maybe we can make some more you know after-school community events mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know the biggest concern that concerns all uh, Long Island uh, Islanders is the is the taxes yes and uh, is there anything you're proposing to control those high property taxes so what I think needs to happen at the town of Huntington is that we need to have people who know how to manage departments, who have the background in, say, for example, on engineering. Mm -hmm. That person who has already managed an engineering department who will be able to come in and create efficiencies. And that's mm -hmm. something that I was responsible for and have seen working in a consulting company mm -hmm. is that you have someone come in, and not that the job wasn't being done properly before, mm -hmm. but there's always there's innovation, somebody has a new idea, uh, you come in and look at it a different way and then maybe or maybe they've already taken another department in another town and made efficiencies and that's the way that we could be saving money mm -hmm. for the taxpayers because if we can have things run smoothly and run better and do more without raising taxes mm -hmm. I think that would make the residents very happy Kathleen I would like to ask you what do you think are the issues with the South Asian community, which are, which are a community of uh, recent uh, uh, immigrants into, yes. into this town? Um, so I've been going out to various areas and having meet and greets mm -hmm. and visiting re the religious communities. And mm -hmm. what I've been hearing is that they love living in, in Huntington. They're mm -hmm. really happy, as, as many of us are. Um, but there are times that they don't feel that they have a voice on the town board. Mm -hmm. And that 
I've promised them that I will be that voice. I will be somebody that will listen to them for their concerns. And there have been, they want to be able to feel safe in bringing issues to me or also becoming more involved. And that's a lot that I heard of too. During the summer, I have um, two interns that are great. They're now back going back to graduate school, but their families were saying that, you know, we've, they've been so successful in all their areas that they've done. They've had multiple degrees and they're very successful in their business, but they realize that they have not had a connection into into the government and that's important because to get their voice done so mm -hmm. what I've been doing and I've been lucky to mm -hmm. be able to do is to be able to bring those kids and and show them this is what we do this is how you run a campaign mm -hmm. this is how the town works mm -hmm. these are people that you need to know and I'm very fortunate to have some very experienced women who have run multiple campaigns mm -hmm. at the federal and uh, state level and also former elected officials who have sat down with them and we've talked about how you reach the community how you talk to the community and and what various departments do so um yeah so i think that that's part of it too it's really good i think i think we need to have everyone to have a voice De definitely mm -hmm. kathleen uh i i, I would like uh, you to tell us in your own words why should the voters pick you to lead this town um, well, I did tell you about my background with contract management stuff. And also the reason that I should be elected to the town council is because I am consider myself a resident. I'm a resident first before I'm a politician. Mm -hmm. I've been living in the town for 21 years. I'm the only one that's running or would be on the board from the East Northport, Northport area. Mm -hmm. So that's important area to also make sure that we have, you know, people looking out at each parts of the town of Huntington. And I am running to make sure that our government is working for us. Mm -hmm. I'm not running it because I have another business that I'm looking to. This will be my full-time job. Mm -hmm. I'll be totally dedicated to it. And and really passionate and I think that I feel there's areas that I can fix and and that's why I think you should run. I definitely think the town can use your experience. Okay. Thank you very much for coming here today. Thank you very much for uh, speaking with us. Uh, Asan Thode, uh, Huntington Town Council, the candidate, uh, Kathleen Cleary. Uh, I hope to see the girl uh, uh, closely soon. Jedi election here on November 5. Zrood Barao, vote Pao. Thanks for watching The Way Forward. The way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai main toda host Harjot Singh assi pichle hafte vich eh janya ke jehdi impeachment inquiry hai uh, president uh, trump de khilaf oh hun uh, congress vich shuru ho gayi hai aj assi janange apne political correspondent uh, shri jag rajpal ji tu ki eh impeachment inquiry ki cheez hai impeachment ki cheez hai aur kis wajah de naal president trump te is vele e jehdi impeachment inquiry hai e shuru kiti gayi hai jack ji toda bahut bahut swagat hai hi hi ajot jack ji sanu dasoge ki uh, tusi uh, pichle haftyan vich sanu kiya si ga ki uh, kuch inquiry shuru hui hai but it was not a formal uh, impeachment inquiry क्या हूँ एक फॉर्मल इम्पीचमेंट प्रोसीडिंग शुरू कर दी गई है प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप के खिलाफ यस अर्जोत आई थिंक लास्ट टाइम अभी कवर किया कांग्रेस से जी है काफी दो चार कमेटीज है जी कि ट्रंप न ऑलरेडी इनवैसिगेट कर रही थी फॉर डिफरेंट रीजन जी ट्रंप के टैक्स रिटर्न लैके ट्रंप इंटरैक्शन विद रशिया एंड ऑल दैट काफी कुछ टॉपिक्स है उस करके इन्वैसिगेशन चली रहा है बट हमने रिसेंटली तो एक विसल ब्लोअर अस गल करा होर अबाउट द विसल ब्लोअर जी बट किसी ने कंप्लेन की थी है कि कि ट्रंप इन ए कॉल विद यूक्रेन प्रेजिडेंट उन्होंने जो कम्यूनीकेशन होया है वो जी गल की गई हैगी दैट वायोलेटेड अ लॉट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वो जो कंप्लेन सरफेस हुई हैगी Uh, and post uh, karke a formal impeachment hun and Nancy Pelosi used the uh, ne start kar diti hai ji so now it's a formal start of an impeachment uh, process uh, with the US House of uh, Representatives jack ji sanu is impeachment de bare thoda hor dasoge what what is impeachment so uh, jo tera impeachment jo hai ga it's a it's a process 
by which to see kisi bhi government official nu hata sakde ho in America che ji specifically speaking on in this mahol che jada si president di gal kar rahe hain uh you know there is a you know, article 1 and article 2 of our constitution mm -hmm. lays out the procedure of how do you remove a federal official who is working ji uh on for president of course you know he is the highest uh, office holder of the country so the constitution specifically say lays out ki yadi president nu yadi remove karna hoye te kis tarah ki procedure hona chahida hai ga ਉਸ ਇੰਪੀਚਮੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਤੇ ਐਕਟੀਵੇਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਤੇ ਨੈਂਸੀ ਪਲੂਸੀ ਨੇ ਐ ਇੰਪੀਚਮੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਦੋ ਸਟੈਪ ਦੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਹਾਊਸ ਆਫ ਰੈਪਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟੇਟਿਵਸ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਪੀਚ ਕਰੇਗਾ which is a kind of like a formal acquisition and if that ਹਾਊਸ ਆਫ ਰੈਪਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟੇਟਿਵਸ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਮੈਜੋਰਟੀ ਉਹ ਫਾਰਮਲੀ ਅਕਿਊਜ਼ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਐਂਡ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਸਿੰਪਲ ਮੈਜੋਰਟੀ ਵੋਟ ਤਾਂ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਐ you know in peach when dj step che pahunch daega which is to the senate acha so uh, the first step is the first step is ki inquiry hogi fir kuch charges uh, draft kite jaange house us de upar vote payega aur agar a house which pass ho janda hai then it will go to senate is it right yes that's that's correct yes, so that's is correct. is is the uh, senate legally bound to take that or jis tarah se pehle dekhiya hai kai issues which senate ne kiya hai ki asi a issue chakange hi nahi to uh, are they legally required to uh, address this issue yes so our constitution is very clear if the house does pass the impeachment uh, proceedings with a majority then the senate has to take uh impeachment uh, inquiry mm -hmm. this senate the process on the it was to can then a trial and conviction g and uh, once the case goes to senate uh, you know the presiding officer of senate usually jayega the vice president hunda aega but in this case because the person being impeached is the president himself mm -hmm. and vice president the uh, conflict of interest on that uh, because if the president gets impeached vice president becomes the president g so in that case if uh, in this scenario when the senior senate does the trial and conviction then it is presided by the chief justice of uh, supreme court uh, and i i, I believe a jada particular case uh, is there which uh, the vice president might be implicated uh, as well is that right ah uh, han ji yes yes so you know eh jada kissa start hoya hai ga it is start is tarah hai ki there is a call to the trump ne ki tc with the ukraine president Ji. president zelensky to congratulate him on his party's recent victory in the parliamentary uh, parliamentary system mm -hmm. Uh, oh call je jada hai ga there's a lot of back and forth you know trump is congratulating and and etc etc but during the call there's some discussions came up uh, about uh, joe biden son hmm oh topic jada hai ga oh us topic nu leke jis varge oh topic uthaya gaya hai ga ki gal kiti gayi hai ki us topic nu leke ek federal official jis nu assi whistle blower kehnde hai ji us ne complaint kiti hai ki ki jehdi trump ne gal kiti hai ki it violates the constitution it's against the law mm -hmm. and which is what the starting point of this uh, impeachment is jo allegation samne aa rahi hai wo oh, eh hai ki uh, ukraine nu us military aid denda hai russia de uh, to uh, defense layi ਔਰ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੋਈ 400 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਦੀ ਏਡ ਸੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਟਰੰਪ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਵਿਦਹੋਲਡ ਕੀਤਾ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਕਹਿ ਕੇ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਟ ਕਰੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਰਾਈਵਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਬਾਈਡਨ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬੇਟੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਦੈਟ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਸ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਟ ਦ ਐਲੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਸ ਯਾ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਆ ਮੀਨ ਦੈਟ ਦੈਟਸ ਅ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਅ ਹਾਈ ਲੈਵਲ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਦੈਟਸ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਟਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਨ ਫੈਕਟਸ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਤੇ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਪਰੀਕੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਟ ਦ ਇਮਪੀਚਮੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਵਿਲ ਡੂ ਵੈਨ ਦੇ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਟ ਐਂਡ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਡੈਪਥ ਆਫ ਡੀਟੇਲਸ ਜੀ ਬਟ ਦ ਸੀਕਵੈਂਸ ਆਫ ਐਲੀਗੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਇਜ਼ ਯੈਸ ਕਿ ਟਰੰਪ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਟਾਈਮ ਚ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਏਟ ਵਿਥਹੋਲਡ ਕਰ ਲਿੱਤੀ ਸੀ ਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਜਦੋਂ ਵਿਥਹੋਲਡ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਇੰਟੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸ ਟੂ ਪੁੱਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਔਨ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਸਮ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਲਦੋ ਉਸ ਵਕਤ ਈਵਨ ਹਿਸ ਰਿਪਬਲਿਕਨ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਤੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਤੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਕੀਤਾ
that he should not do this and he should release the military aid to Ukraine. The mm-hmm. party the pressure aake Trump released the aid. Then there was a call that was and call che Durani te Trump ne jado galbat chal rahi si he brought up Biden again. Mm-hmm. So that again stirred the whole topic ki eh kahani aje khatam nahi hui hai ki Trump is pursuing to uh, you know uh, his political uh, rival uh, Biden uh, and he is using all means to implicate him or by implicating his son indirectly mm-hmm. implicating his potential rival in 2020 election mm-hmm. and uh, this is uh, that July 25 uh, 2019 call right Ahan ji yes yes uh, that was that call um, there are a lot of flavors in that call jade uh, you know uh, on the hand ke you know uh, trump can da aega ki now trump is backing out ki you know i have been just pressing on ukraine to investigate into general corruption also mm-hmm. uh, it was not just about bidens mm-hmm. but uh, you know if you look at a lot of the text messages and thodi bahut jadi inquiry hui hai ki again mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. we have to wait for the entire investigation mm-hmm. uh, the, the so the early investigation says that it, it the government of us has never pressurized ukraine so much to investigate corruption even though president trump can then he mera nu pressurize kar reya si uh now time only will tell uh ke you know sahi gal kinni hai ki chhoot kinni hai ki uh you know president also if we all remember you know uh, president the uh, campaign manager see 2016 Ji. Paul Manafort mm-hmm. he himself was involved in Ukraine and business activities mm-hmm. and you know he has been sentenced behind the bar Ji. and trump was actively very much defending manafort even when he was uh, convicted ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਹਾਣੀ ਚ ਇਹਨੋ ਕਾਫੀ ਮੋੜ ਆਂਦੇ ਐ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੇ ਯੂਨੋ ਤੇ ਥੈਟਸ ਵਾਟ ਰੇਜ਼ਸ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਕਿ ਕੁਝ ਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਕਨਫਲਿਕਟ ਆਫ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈਗਾ ਜੈਕ ਦ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਦੈਟ ਕਮਸ ਟੂ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਇਸ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਟਸ ਸੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਹ ਕਰਪਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈਗੀ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਫੋਰ ਯੂਨੋ ਐਕਸਟਰਾ ਟੈਰੀਟੋਰੀਅਲ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਐਮਬੈਸੀ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਾਊਂਟਰਪਾਰਟਸ ਹਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਨਵੋਲਵ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਸੀ ਆਈ ਏ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਐਫ ਬੀ ਆਈ ਕੋਈ ਕੋਈ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਟਰੰਪ ਵੈਂਟ ਅਰਾਊਂਡ ਆਲ ਥੋਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਐਂਡ directly apne attorney general nu kehna ya ek private attorney nu involve karna rudy juliani for a purpose like this does, does that look fishy or how, how do you see that yes yeah, so you know the, the optics of it looks very bad in reality we'll find out in, in uh, after the investigation but the optics ke why is the private attorney of uh, donald trump or the president interacting with ukraine hai kyo ho raha hai ga Mm-hmm. maybe there was a reason behind that maybe he was hired by state department mm-hmm. maybe he was not hired by mm-hmm. unhe kahani nobody knows this is what the investigation is about but few things which we know mm-hmm. he stay you know trump can da aega ke main uh, anti corruption uh, campaign laya hua hai against the ukraine government ji but if you look at the expenditure of the state department mm-hmm. against ukraine one of the anti corruption spending against ukraine mm-hmm. of us Mm-hmm. has been constant koi badhiya nahi hai ga acha ji so you know some of these data does not tell us that you know sada focus thi ke corruption utte cut karna hai ga hmm te a a impeachment jadi inquiry hai isliye kis stage te pahunchi hai so you know at this stage uh, there are almost seven committees in the house which are investigating donald trump hmm in various aspects you know ek ek call like it of course you know two char topics aur aa gaye hain bade sensitive topics ji but there is a house judiciary committee which is looking into obstruction of justice house intelligence committee which is looking into this call mm-hmm. a house oversight committee which is looking into you know how is conducting business on security clearances ways and means is looking into tax returns of Donald Trump which is an old investigation going on mm-hmm. house financial services transportation and infrastructure foreign affairs so as such committees hand they are looking into various aspects the only difference is that now there is a formal inquiry which has started mm-hmm. again after the findings of these committees uh, articles of impeachment will be drafted mm-hmm. with true facts and the committee the analysis hoegi sat committees bhi ji and then the congress will have to vote on it ji and a simple majority is required 
for Congress to uh, impeach the president, which is a formal acquisition. He had come Galatita Gyasi so that the Senate can take uh, the next step. ते जग जी यूएस हिस्ट्री विच पहले भी किसी प्रेसिडेंट नो इम्पीच किता गया एंड हैज दैट इम्पीचमेंट एवर बीन सक्सेसफुल सो इट्स अ गुड क्वेश्चन यू नो आई मीन इफ यू लुक एट द हिस्ट्री यू नो देयर हैव बीन टू प्रेसिडेंट्स हु हैव बीन एक्चुअली फॉर्मली बीन इम्पीच्ड दैट मींस की कांग्रेस हाउस ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स वोटेड एंड इट पास यू नो बाय अ सिंपल मेजॉरिटी पहले से uh president andrew jackson mm-hmm. who was impeached mm-hmm. back in 1868 mm-hmm. and the most recent history was uh president bill clinton jack ji jack ji assi ithe ek choti ji break lange tode naal ek gal jari rakhange ek choti ji break de baad tusi vekhte raho the way forward द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है अच्छा जैक जी तुम सू दस रहे थे कि पेल दो इंसटेंसिज इम्पीचमेंट्स पहले प्रेजिडेंट की हुई हैं एंड्रयू जैक्सन एंड बिल क्लिंटन तो डिड दीज इम्पीचमेंट्स लीड टू रिमूवल ऑफ द प्रेजिडेंट फ्रॉम द ऑफिस नो सो अगेन जिकन मैं कह सी कि इट्स अ टू स्टेप प्रोसेस द हाउस हैज टू पास विद अ सिंपल मेजोरिटी एंड देन सैनिट हैज टू पास बाय द वे the uh, the threshold for senate is slightly higher mm-hmm. then it when it actually convicts the uh, president they have to pass it by two thirds majority so mm-hmm. bar is very high mm-hmm. unlike uh, in the house of, in, 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 in the first step mm-hmm. so both in andrew jackson's case uh, and bill clinton's case they were impeached by the house of representatives mm-hmm. but uh, senate achieved uh, a two third majority nimil pai hai Uh, Andrew Jackson interestingly you know Senate was just short of one vote in mm-hmm. getting the two thirds majority mm-hmm. but in case of Bill Clinton uh, they were far shy of two thirds majority in uh, convicting him so, so it, both the presidents uh, survived the only president who ever stepped down was Nixon but he stepped down before the start of impeachment process itself mm-hmm. he he resigned yeah so it might be uh, difficult uh, in this case as well as we dekhde hain ki jdi senate ch majority hai or republican party di hai who are still uh, standing uh, along with, with the president right it's uh, it's very right you know and very interestingly you know senate majority leader mitch mcconnell has already started raising funds hmm. he's doing fundraising to squash this impeachment process Mm-hmm. So you know you can see how polarized we are, and Senate is working on a very different way. Mm-hmm. They, you know, we'll see. Time only will tell. Yeah. We'll see on that. And and we don't know that the inquiry uh, how lead carried it. Keep it up. Chalda. I understand that today a more whistle blower uh, samne aaye and and who is uh, uh, claiming direct knowledge of uh, what has happened, but only time will tell that what uh, is the truth uh, in in all this. So uh, it's interesting you bring that, uh, Joe. You know, with this. the whistle blower you know there is some allegations mm-hmm. say that the inspector general of intelligence committee mm-hmm. they probably changed the guidelines of whistle blower how they file a complaint mm. uh you know so that itself is a, a red flag somebody has to investigate mm-hmm. when the first whistle blower came he had it alleged that he had started talking to the senate uh, house intelligence committee already before filing the complaint So there are a lot of allegations on both sides so we don't know the real truth and time will tell us <laughs> uh राज जी सू दसोगे कि जीडी इसलिए टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी की डेमोक्रेटिक जो प्रोसैस चलता पे है अपना नॉमिनी चूज कर उस दे विच की चल रहा है वी अंडरस्टैंड कि बर्नी सैंडर्स हैज सफर्ड ए हार्ट अटैक लास्ट वीक Yes, uh, Jyot. Uh, you know, this age of Bernie Sanders was always a concern. He's right now 78. So should he win? And he be, should he become a president? And by the time he takes oath, he'll be 80 years old. So that was always a concern. Mm-hmm. He suffered a, a heart attack. He was hospitalized and he was released uh, yesterday. Uh, he says that he is in good health, but definitely, I think it's a little bit set back to his campaign because mm-hmm. the question always comes, uh, you know, sent in front of. ਕਿ ਇਹ ਮੇਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟ ਉਹਦੀ ਹੈਲਥ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੈਗੀ ਸੋ ਥੈਟਸ ਵਿਲ ਸੀ ਹਾਊ ਪੋਲਿੰਗ ਚੇ ਹਾਊ ਹੀ ਫੇਅਰਸ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਅਹੈਡ 
he has stopped. He already started dropping a little bit the last uh, couple of days ever mm-hmm. since uh, he had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, interestingly, Elizabeth Warren is rising a lot in the last uh, couple of weeks, especially after the last debate. Mm-hmm. Um, as we know, uh, Iowa chair is, is the first caucus on February 3rd. Mm-hmm. And the most recent poll tells us that Warren is uh, number one in polling in Iowa. Yeah, and I think with this uh, this health issue with uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Biden's name uh, being being dragged into this uh, investigation and everything, uh, it um, it might work in favor of uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, very well said, Ajot. Uh, you know, Sanders' loss is Warren's gain because one of the demographics which supports is the same. G. So, obviously, I think that's a factor uh, which will help and continue to help Warren in this. And uh, Biden being dragged into this controversy, you know, it's a double-edged sword, you know. One thinking is that uh, it sort of brings him back to the limelight. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they say that bad publicity is also a good part, there is the publicity. Mm-hmm. So, depends on how he plays his cards, mm. but uh, we'll see. And, and the latest on uh, Bernie Sanders is that he has suspended TV ads in Iowa. That That is a surprising move. Yes, that's a surprising move. You know, so, you know, it's, it's quite puzzling as to what his strategy is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all these happened very recently. So, you know, we don't know what exactly is going in his mind, his strategy. It's the first caucus. Um, and he has slipped in polls. You know, mm-hmm. he used to be in... Uh, 18, 20 percent, but now he's slipped to 12 percent at uh, in Iowa. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, maybe that has something to do with that. Maybe he's giving up on Iowa. We don't know. Mm-hmm. And and when is the next debate? So next debate is on uh, 15th of October uh, in Ohio, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, there are 12 candidates who have qualified for it already. Mm-hmm. The last debate said that candidate see Ote Hain, plus we have now uh, uh, Tom Sawyer and uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Very interestingly, she has qualified back again for uh, this debate. Mm-hmm. And uh, who? Who who would you call the front runners uh, at this stage? I understand uh, Pete Buttigieg. How how is his campaign going on? So you know, Pete. You know, if you look at the top five in uh, the uh, Democratic primary, it's your Biden, Warren, Elizabeth Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, and uh, Harris. So very interestingly, since the last debate, uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg has you know risen in the poll polls. Mm-hmm. And which is, and more surprisingly, uh, or I shouldn't say more surprisingly, Harris has fallen down in the uh, polls. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nationally also, and very surprisingly, she has started to lag in polls in her own uh, home state of California, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit uh, a setback to her, and it's a little bit surprised to many people. Mm -hmm. Didn't she make some immediate gains after attacking uh, uh, Vice President Biden? Yes, in the very first uh, debate, if you remember, I think she was very feisty against uh, Biden, and I think uh, she gained uh, momentarily after that. Mm-hmm. Some people say that, you know, if Biden loses because of this uh, air impeachment process, Chal uh, with uh, Donald Trump, then her Biden's loss would be Harris's gain. But, you know, she has had many false starts, and but she has yet to catch a fire, which is what concerns and probably bothering her. She's kind of rebooting her campaign also. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has put her, you know, uh, boots in ground in uh, the southern states, mm-hmm. most recently trying to uh, gather some momentum and get some uh, black African-American community votes back and momentum from that aspect of the demographics. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think she's trying to shake her campaign up and get back into action. Mm-hmm. Asi, uh, is debate process the or is nomination process the apni niga badi closely rakhi hai tode te tode tak assi oh news leke aande rahange jack ji sade naal gal karan da toda bahut bahut shukriya you said the next debate is october 15th yes sir yes the assi us da detailed analysis tode ko leke aange with mr jack rajpal 
द वे फॉरवर्ड देख का थोड़ा बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया तुम वेखते रहो द वे फॉरवर्ड